Good to see you. How are you? So good to see you again. How are you? Very well. It's been a little more than a month since I saw you, and I miss you. It's it's good to see you again. So, Gurudev, I have a couple of questions for you today. You know, the lifestyle of people has changed all across the world with what's happening right now. Now we, yes, we could say the world is resetting. You know, there are pros and cons. Nature, the air is getting cleaner. We're seeing more animals out. Those are the positives. Not to take away from the pain and suffering of people who are dying through this. Not to take away from you know all of the problems that exist. Right now, the doctors on the front line. We have daily workers who are not getting their wages, but there are many people who take this in a very positive stride. A lot of people are getting more time with their families. They're realizing that time is so valuable that they didn't have before. They're connecting with their families. Many of them are exercising more. They're looking at their nutrition. They're meditating more. They want to learn how to meditate. And of course, there's the negative aspect of it. Guru Dev, how do we encourage? we encourage people across the world to look at this in a positive light as well as be safe stay at home respect the rules of the government and do what is right for the country what is your take on this yeah this is a time we need to create this awareness tell people look uh, you cross your door you go out then you are putting yourself in danger you know it's not something that you can heal or cure right away like that not only that you are you will be responsible for at least 100000 people you may not even realize you are infected but you would be spreading this uh, dangerous dangerous uh, things to others you know so creating awareness is one thing and second as you said now is a time that they can all that they have been postponing are keeping aside you know take time to do all that you know a little change in their lifestyle of course it's like when you are driving in um, high speed and you suddenly have to put a brake everything gets jolted and this jolt has come for couple of that's right this is what we must uh, encourage everyone to do yeah. okay so gurudev over the last couple of days i'm seeing a different spike in the kind of patients that come to us you know we're seeing people coming up with vitiligo problems autoimmune problems skin problems which is an eruption of an autoimmune disorder this autoimmune disorder is triggered by stress and anxiety anxiety happening and the impact that it is happening that is happening on physical health like my last few cases have been people with vitiligo patches small white patches that have suddenly spread all over the body or someone who had an eczema on their skin and now it's spreading all over their body and the first question i ask them is are you stressed are you anxious and they say yes we don't know what's going to happen so fear is real and it is impacting their immune system and their physical self So Guru Dev how do we address the fear and anxiety because people are connected all the time with news and social media which is not bad if we use it in a constructive way but some people reach out and they say we don't know how to handle this so what would your advice be to people who are gripped in this fear and anxiety that is impacting their physical health yes you know nearly 80% of the illnesses are psychosomatic that means the mind has right. a very very vital role to play you know if your mind um is not taken care of it's not addressed to it can create the anxiety <clears throat> neurosis and then it can also lead you to depression right and anxiety anger for example all these negative emotions 
will right away bring your immune system down. It causes damage to our immune system. So here pranayama, breathing exercise, and meditation, or like Rambhan, or like are the best thing to do to combat uh, stress and anxiety. So I would recommend people to do some pranayama, 10 minutes pranayama, thrice a day, before lunch, before breakfast, before lunch, before dinner. You can do that. And then sit and meditate. Right. So Gurudev, what you say is backed by a lot of science today. You know, we've seen it. I've had a patient come with high blood pressure and I've told him to just sit and do his pranayama for five minutes. And then we recheck his blood pressure and his systolic and diastolic comes down by 10 to 15 points, which means they move from hypertension to normal BP. So mm -hmm. pranayama is absolutely powerful. And I think that's one way of grounding and connecting yourself. Uh, Guru Dave, I was thinking about this today morning on social media. And what I'm wondering is it takes a virus like this to create a world crisis. Okay, and now we see people and society coming. Everyone wants to help. You know, people want to help the elderly. People want to help their neighbors. There's so much of compassion coming out. But my point is, why do we need such a serious situation? So many deaths to trigger off compassion in human beings. I'm really struggling to understand this. You know, when there's no crisis, people are, you know, there's hatred, there's anger, there's a rat race. But it's beautiful to see how this crisis has actually brought people together. So can you explain to us why this happens and why it can't be consistent? Needs are mysterious. Yes. You know, when people forgot to give importance to life, but we were giving so much importance to the accessories of life. Now nature said, now sit back and think. Value the life that I have given you. You know, this is what nature is telling you. Nature says, Attend to the central body of your existence, that is your life. You are so lost in acquiring the accessories for life and forgot the very core essence of your existence. Now you sit in, go in, look into yourself. This is a, I think it's a call from the nature, warning call or you know, like kids, when they don't listen to the parents, they drag them in and <laughs> compulsively put them under lock and key. I think this is what nature has done to us all. So now is the time. Uh, make best use of the time. You know, some of the most creative solitude, even today, is to write a beautiful Bollywood script or, a make, uh, or to put music to a great song, they can't do it. An artist cannot do it in a crowd. They have to find that quiet corner in their home. In fact, every humorous um, episode of any TV serial has sprung out from the corner of someone's home, silent corner of some artist's house. So this is the time to uh, look into the creative aspect inside of you. You know, spending time with yourself, you can write poems, you can um, write prose, you can write novels, you can make nice painting. You know, whether arts or science, it needs solitude. People yeah. who excel in their field, they have to sit quiet and think. You know, they cannot do it in the noisy in the bazaar. So this could be a great opportunity for great creative things to come out from every family, number one. Second, uh, we need to help out to people, of course. It's the daily wage people who are the most affected. But please don't venture out of your home to do this. There are people who are design designated and there are government machineries are there. And if you want to be volunteer for this, go through proper channel, you know. Yeah. Our art of living IH, is also part of this volunteering. And I would say not get, I would tell all of our volunteers, not everybody jump in the street, try to do something. No, because mm -hmm. in this enthusiasm or in your, in a bolt of compassion, you may be spreading the virus. You may be cause of spreading this, uh, you know, 
epidemic. So it's better we uh, rein in our compassion and enthusiasm and work through proper channels and see that the deliveries are done. See, we just yesterday delivered near 12 trucks of food packets for about a lack of family. So uh, that is done very meticulously, taking right permission, having people trained how to do it, how they have to wear gloves and masks, and that use sanitizers while giving and while taking, you know, all that stuff need to be done in a very uh, systematic manner. So at this time, I think we have to be very careful out of our enthusiasm to distribute something we got, step out of the house, uh, and uh, we give room to this uh, epidemic more. Right. So I think we should follow government protocol. That's the best stay locked yes. down. But I just got to know about the initiative today, Gurudev, about what you were doing, Art of Living was doing for families, where, you know, contributions of a thousand bucks can feed like 10, for 10 days, it can feed one family. So, yes. you know, I think giving back always leaves us with a good feeling, but without having us to be physically involved, we can drive it through the right channel. So uh, thank you for that initiative. Talking about time at home, children and children and parents. So screen time has definitely gone up for everyone. You know, that's going to happen, you know, because people are not used to being at home for so long. So yes, children can learn a lot through, you know, uh, different apps and stuff. Gurudev, uh, what would your advice be? Because I know, I know your foundation also has unique ways and ancient ways of teaching children without screen time. So there can be a little bit of screen time that parents can use for their children. But are there any other techniques or advice that you want to give parents out there where they can utilize that time with their children to learn over and above just using the screen? Yeah, uh, with the children, we can, you know, we have also started an online workshop for kids. So usually children don't, love to learn so much from the parents as they would love to learn from other people, <laughs> their friends and, you know, folks. So it's uh, better that they have their own corner to learn while the elders can sit and meditate, you know. Uh, elders can really do short meditations. I'm leading in meditation every day, 12 noon and evening 7.30. Today also we will do a short meditation yeah. Uh, I think that uh, will uh, will keep people energized and they keep their enthusiasm. You know, um, yeah. I think that that should help. But with the kids, definitely, uh, it's it's a good time for them to sit and learn a lot. They can learn different musical instrument. This is the time to learn languages. You know, if you go on the net, there are a number of uh, apps which would help you to learn different languages. These are the challenges the parents can throw to kids and ask them to do something creative, you know? Yeah. yeah. So that's the balance between screen time and uh, what, whatever other education they can learn from their parents, even things like <clears throat> crafts, arts and crafts, painting, all of that. Yes. So Gurudev, I have two last questions because there are millions of people waiting for the meditation that's going to follow from this. Achievement versus contentment. Today, just before the virus came in, everyone has a different definition of success. Like people's definition of success is lose your health, you lose your family, your relationships, but get that designation, build that wealth, have fancy cars. So there's so much of achievement, which is great for us, but the definition of success is complete completely, completely gone. You know, I have millionaire clients, I have billionaire clients achieved. But when I ask them, are you happy? Are you content? The answer is no. So contentment and achievement. What advice would you have to, you know, people out there in business, people getting into startups, are youths? Because if they think success is defined by just money, cars, wealth, society, and everything, but at the end of the day, they're still empty and hollow inside. That's something that, you know, we really want to fix in the world. You know, because that's bringing more depression. Because I always look at it, you know, wealth right. goes up, but depression also increases. It should be the opposite. What's your advice to people on that, Gurudev? See life from a bigger context. Okay, you achieve all that money. You put it all in the bank. But what's going to happen? You're going to die one day. You forget you're going to die. 
you live as though you are going to be here forever. The moment you realize that could be anywhere close to you, suddenly it puts a break for your uh, rat racing attitude, a, a tendency that you are so used to. You know, uh, you know then you start thinking, oh, what, do, what am I up to? What do I want? What are my priorities? These questions will haunt you. When these questions haunt you, then you start uh, becoming more aware. This is one thing. Second is, um, look at all those who, have, who are ahead of you in the race. Look at them. Have they got anything? You find them all also empty. You know, young people are so intelligent. They say, we don't want to be like them. The elder, uh, elderly generation, which are running day and night, you know, and really got nothing. This is another, you know, um, throughout the world, this is a tendency among young people. They don't want such success. So here, there's need a balance. You have to look within yourself, have the contentment, Contentment is not comp being complacent. Being content and also being dynamic. They are not contrary to each other. Often people think if you are dynamic, you must have passion and there is no contentment. Restlessness is not dynamism. You know, frustration is not dynamism. And contentment is not lethargy. We must make it very clear. So let us do a contentment meditation today. What do you say? That sounds great. Thank you so much, Gurudev. And uh, over to you for the meditation. Yeah. Let us sit comfortably easily. And relax our shoulders. And let's Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Hold the breath and let go. Once again, let's take a deep breath in. Take full breath. Fill your lung to the capacity. No, you can't breathe anymore. You have to be content with what you have already taken in. How long can you hold it? You have to let go. Let go of your breath. Breathing in is the passion and breathing out is this passion. They go together. Breathing again, in breath energizes the body. Hold the breath with a smile. Hold it as long as you can. And as you breathe out, Relax. This is breath of contentment. Remember those moments when you have experienced contentment. Those moments when you have experienced contentment, you are hungry, you had food, you felt content. You are tired, you had good nap, you have contentment. Seeing, smelling, touching, tasting, we have had contentment. Remember those moments
and let go. Become aware of your breath in your nostrils. And we breathe in tiny breaths, tiny sip of breath. Like you sip a juice. Like you sip a glass of juice. And let go. Your mind is embracing your body. Your body is in tight hug of your mind. Our consciousness is in every cell of our body and around the body. Let us recognize this life force that is alive and kicking in every cell of our existence, every particle of our existence. Like a camphor piece that is burning, a whole body is glowing with consciousness. It's consumed by the consciousness. Let's take another deep breath in. And let go. As you breathe out, relax your body. Let go all your efforts. Then think of any desire and just imagine if it's fulfilled how you feel and feel that fulfillment, that desire is already fulfilled. And let go. Recollect all those wishes of yours when they got fulfilled, how you felt. Recreate that within you without much effort. Those are the moments when the breath was very subtle and it was moving upward. Like you're sniffing a flower, a fragrant flower. Breathe in and let go.
once again remember any particular wish of yours and let go and imagine it is already fructified it is fulfilled and let go become aware of the space in your room as you become aware of the space in your room your mind is already touching the walls and the ceiling mind has expanded And all those moments of contentment the mind expands and it flies like a bird the mind gets the wings and it expands it's in space let go of all your efforts right away let go of all imagination all efforts and all ambitions just be become aware of the vast sky the blue sky outside your home enveloping this whole planet of so much intelligence and so much diversity so many species millions and trillions of stars out there and many planets like ours out there many more universes and many more creatures notice this moment body is still the mind is expanding leaps and bounds any tension or stress you find anywhere in the body let it be let's not try to get out of them or get them out of our system just let everything freeze wherever they are
this moment we have nothing to do and nothing to know either this moment let us drop everything that we are holding on to and just repose with a smile all that is yours will be with you in abundance There's no dirt or no land. You are contentment. nature has abundance to provide to you all that you need and all that you wish just repose in your side let go of all your effort let us become aware of our body and surroundings again have tiny sips of breath through your nostrils and with a big smile of contentment breathe out
another deep breath in and breathe out with a smile. And let's become aware of our body and surrounding. And slowly and gradually, let us open our eyes. Yeah? Mm. That's good, no? Yes. <laughs> I think the objects are outside, but the sense of contentment is inside of us. You know, the, when you are hungry, you eat food. But when you, your hunger is not satisfied by food, that means you have bulimia. <laughs> so the bulimia is the craving for it in the mind. So when we understand nature is going to provide us if we want if we have a, some wish and that wish will be granted you know that confidence we need to have like children at home they know if they have want something and mom and dad are going to give them when they have their confidence they are normal if kids get so paranoid that their mom and dad are not going to give them what they want they need counseling Right. right. Same with us adults also. When we have this confidence, my wish will be granted or my desires will fructify. In due course of time, you will be normal. You will be able to experience small little things and find joy in everything around you. See, when you reflect on all that you have achieved, whenever you achieve something, you have very little time to enjoy that enjoy. because before that, another desire is already there. <laughs> you have um, won a state level championship. No, you are not even having time to celebrate it. Your mind is racing to go to national level. You are one national level, then you go on international level. It is good to have that. But at least take a little time to appreciate, enjoy what you have. Now, this will take away the feverishness in you, which puts you on the rat race. Yeah. So time and again, meditation, and then being grateful for all that we already have will have, take us a long way in, in making our life more happier. Instead of running on demands, we say, okay, I'm thankful for this. I'm grateful for this. The gratefulness and thankfulness itself, you know, is a sign of um, contentment exactly. coming in you and keeping at bay the frustration which is ready to pounce into your life. Yeah. Well, Gurudev, you answered the last question that I had for you through your meditation. My last question was very simple. A lot of people say, I can't meditate. You know, I can't stop the thoughts. You know, I can't, I can't sit silent. But I think if everyone followed what you just did, you've actually answered that one question. People think meditation is about stopping the thoughts. They close their eyes and they try to stop the thoughts, stop the thoughts. They try to find enlightenment and peace and they don't get it in two minutes, they give up. So I think you actually answered that question through the meditation practice. Correct, correct. Meditation is, in meditation, you don't uh, do gymnastics with the mind. You don't uh, force anything. You don't concentrate. Unfortunately, many people think meditation is an exercise of concentration. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. It is deep relaxation. You simply have to let go. In the beginning, if, when you sit, if you feel restless, I would tell them to shake their hands a little bit, maybe a couple of minutes. Or do some exercise, maybe stand up and jog, and you sit and let go. Then you can relax. 
Yeah? Do some yoga before, or even pranayam will help. Doing some bhastrika. Take deep breath in and breathe out. Doing this 10, 15 times prepares you to calm down and gets you out of the restless circuit that you are in. Yeah. Thank you so lovely, much, Guru Dev. Lovely, Louise. <laughs> Thank Wonderful. You so much. Wonderful. So Keep much. doing the good work you are doing. Keep giving advice to people on food, health, and everything that you are doing. Thank you for inspiring us, Guru Dev. Thank you wonderful, so much. Wonderful. Many people need to hear from you on their diets, how people are eating, uh, anything that they like and not considering, you know, how food has a big impact on their body. Exercise has a big impact on their health. And you are doing good work on that. Let me congratulate you. Thank, Thank you, Gurudev. You. Thank you.